comes o'er you who sweep he is a time just think of his goodness to you just think of his goodness to you the storms Meditation scripture, it's coming from 1 Corinthians, the 16th, the 15th chapter, excuse me. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. But some men will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Thou fool, thou which thou sowest is not quickened, except it die. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars, and of one star differeth from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. How be it, that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward, that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy, and the second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy, and as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruption must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption 
and this mortal shall have put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Thus the scripture. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's Resurrection Sunday. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, a fear is gone. living just because he lives he lives Christ Jesus lives today he walks with me and he talks with me along life's narrow way he to impart you ask me how I know he lives he lives within my heart can I ask everyone to stand on their feet and worship with us, hallelujah. We serve a risen savior and he's in this world today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I serve a risen savior in this world today. I know that he is living whatever men may say I see his hand of mercy I hear the voice of cheer You ask me how I know he lives oh, I serve a risen savior in this world today I know that he is living whatever men may say I see the hand of mercy I hear the voice of cheer You ask me how I know he lives Along that narrow way, yeah. he lives. Jesus, Jesus lives. Salvation. Salvation. You ask me how I know he lives. Oh. I serve a risen Savior in this world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I see the hand of mercy, I hear the voice of cheer. You ask me how I know he lives. Yeah. Oh. 
you Jesus oh, one more time King of glory Lord oh, fill this place we just wanna oh, we just wanna be with you in the name of Jesus so we'll sing hallelujah until you come again 
again And we'll dance in your presence Until you come again We will sing hallelujah Until you come again Yeah And we'll dance in your presence Till you come again, we will sing hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and we'll dance in your presence until you come. Oh, we will lift our hands and say hallelujah. And we'll dance in your presence. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, we will sing hallelujah. Hey, hey. We will lift our hands and worship you, Lord. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Oh, we will sing hallelujah. In your presence, I just want, I just want you, I just want you, I just want you. Oh, I just want you, I just want you. Nobody else will do. I just want you, I just want you. Oh, I just want you, I just want you. Nobody else will do. Oh, I just want you, I just want you. I just want you, I just want you. I just want you, I just want you. Nobody else will do. your presence fill this place let this place filled with your presence God we need you Jesus we need you Jesus hallelujah we have come here today to worship you in spirit and in truth we have come here today to lift up our hands to open up our mouths Lord God to give you glory Jesus hallelujah 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 Jesus Thank you, God. See if the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple, whom Jesus loved, and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, 
came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showeth unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever, whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. May you continue to stand for our congregational hymn. Our congregational hymn, Victory in Jesus. Testing, testing. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. That's me, yes. Oh, 
the potter wants. The potter Praise the Lord. The potter wants to put you back together again. I'm grateful on this Resurrection Sunday for always being in his hands. For this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We would like to welcome all of our members and visitors, both in person and virtually, who are joining us today. And if there are any first time visitors present, we ask that you stand and remain standing so we can extend to you a church welcome. Amen. Amen. On behalf of our pastor, Apostle Showell, our First Lady, Augusta Showell, we extend to you a very warm church welcome. Please don't let this be the last time that you come. Please come again, and we thank you for coming. Amen. You may be seated. Here at First Apostolic, we have several virtual gathering places for fellowship throughout the week, and you may join us for our adult Sunday school, which is held each Sunday from 9 a.m. until 10:15 a.m., you may join that via the prayer line by calling 540-792-0192, and the access code is 983339-POUND. Youth Sunday School is also held each Sunday from 9 a.m. to 10.15 a.m., and the number to join is 508-924-3992. No access code is required. Then let's gather it each Sunday at 10.30 for morning worship via Facebook Live, our YouTube channel, First Apostolic TV, The Prayer Line, or here in the sanctuary. For those wanting to join remotely without access to the internet, we ask that you feel free to join our Sunday morning worship service via the telephone by calling 540-792-0192, and the access code is 98. 3339-POUND. Morning prayer is held each Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 6.30 a.m., and prayer is also held each Monday night at 7 p.m. Our senior saints meet each Wednesday from 1 to 2 p.m., and you may join their midweek fellowship by calling 508-924-3992, and there is no access code. Then we have Wednesday Night in the Word brought to you each Wednesday night virtually at 7 p.m. Children's Church is also held every Sunday except for first Sunday, the first Sunday of the month. Today, they will be playing games and learning about the Word of God. We ask parents to take their children to an age-appropriate worship experience held in the lower dining hall. The Cancer Awareness Team is available for prayer or encouragement by calling 410-274-2978 or 443-681-9469. You may also send an email to castawareness at gmail.com. The Super Senior Saints Ministry of First Apostolic Faith Church will host a fellowship dinner in honor of our members ages 70 and, and older on Sunday, April 7th at 1.30 p.m. Please join. The Women's Ministry invites you to a Mother's Day brunch and silent hat auction on May 4th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Tickets are $45, and if you are interested in attending this event, please see missionary Yolanda Womack or any of the Women's Ministry's core team members. All monies are due no later than April 28th. It is with regret that we announce the passing of Brother Tory Green, the grandson of Mother Mary James Green, the viewing will be held at Wiley Funeral Home, located at 5657 The Alameda in Baltimore, Maryland, excuse me, on April 8th from 5 to 8 p.m. The homegoing for Tory will be held at Huber Memorial Church, 
located at 5700 Lock Raven Boulevard in Baltimore. The wake will begin at 10 a.m. with the funeral services immediately following at 1030. Please keep the Green and James families in your prayers. These are our church announcements for the week, and we ask that you govern yourselves accordingly. It's currently prayer time in the temple, and the Apostolic Family is praying for our pastor and first lady, all bereaved families, the sick and shut-in, our, our loved ones in, in the armed forces, and for those on our prayer list. For each member of our church, please know that we are praying a special prayer for you. We ask that you all stand. Let us pray. Father, in the master's name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we come to you today, O oh God, first to acknowledge you. Lord, we want to thank you for this day you've given us, O oh Lord. Lord, we thank you for your breath of life still being in us. We thank you, Lord, for the outpouring of your Holy Ghost. Lord, we thank you for all things great and small. We thank you especially today, God, as Resurrection Sunday. Lord, we thank you because this is the day, oh God, that we commemorate your, your victory, God, over death in the grave. It brought salvation. It brought healing. Oh God, it brought all that we need in you, God. And we thank you because you have fellowshiped us into your body forever, God. So Lord, we thank you this morning. We lift you up, worship you, and magnify your name. Lord, at this time, we lift up those who are sick, oh God. Lord, there's some even in our midst that are sick today, oh God. There's some at home, some on the prayer line, some on the internet watching who are sick in their bodies. Some are in hospitals, some are in convalescent homes, nursing homes, oh God, rehabilitation centers, oh God. Lord, but wherever the people are who need healing, Lord, by your stripes, we are healed, oh God. So Lord, we look to you for healing, God. Whether it's healing from physical illness in the body, healing in our hearts, healing in our minds, healing in our spirits, oh God. You are God of healing and wholeness, God. So we lift up the sick before you right now. Lord, we are praying for miracles, signs and wonders. God, it is our desire today that someone will leave this place healed. Someone will leave with a good report. No matter what the doctor says, we believe your report because your report says we are healed. Your report says we are free, oh God. So Lord, we thank you. Lord, look on our leaders today. Lord, we bless your name for them, God. And Lord, we ask that you will bless your word today as it go forth. Strengthen and anoint, oh God. Lord, help us in all that we do. Not that we just go through the motions, but Lord, help us to worship you because you're worthy of all glory, worthy of all honor, worthy of all praise. So we thank you for your blessings and your goodness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
The choir asked the question, who rolled the stone away? And then they answered and said, I don't know. And then I said, I don't care. All I know is Jesus is risen from the grave. Just like he said he would. Hallelujah. And this is why we celebrate today. Because he rose, he rose, he rose from the grave. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. And we come on this Resurrection Sunday. Thank you, Jesus. To celebrate the fact that we serve a risen Savior and his name is Jesus. We're grateful this morning to be in the house of God, amen. Thank you, Father. And we are delighted that you have chosen to share this Resurrection Sunday with us. This is the time that we prepare our hearts and give of our tithe and our offering. And we're going to do this differently from now forward that we ask that you stand and we will pray first and then we'll receive our offering, amen? As the deacons come, those that have your offering prepared, please stand. Thank you, Jesus. We have had a beautiful week of celebration. Hallelujah. Yes, the road to victory has been just that, a victorious road. And we thank God for each of you who came out and those that were a part of our virtual spaces and platforms. We thank God for each of you. As we prepare our hearts, Father, we thank you and we bless you for every gift that's in the building. That is not our monetary gift, but every person that's here, they are a gift from God. We thank you, God, hallelujah, for life and breath. We thank you, God, for you dying on the cross that we might have a right to the tree of life. Now, as we bring our gifts, Lord, we ask that you will bless and sanctify it, that we can use it for the furtherance of the gospel until you come. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Let every heart say amen. 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 amen.
to be in your presence once again. Yes, we do lift your name up, hallelujah. Everywhere we go, every chance we have, we will lift your name up, Lord. Because we know when you are lifted up, hallelujah, you said you draw all men unto you. We bless you, Father, for the gifts that we're able to give on this day. We trust, Father, that you will help us in being good stewards over what we've given, that we can continue to advance this gospel message until you return. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Let every heart say amen. 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 Won't you put your hands together and receive the Vesta vow, Bishop Carolyn Shoel, as she comes. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. We are grateful for this day, this Sunday morning, and we need to pray. We want to pray because because we want the Lord to, to confirm in us the purpose of this day we're getting there but the atmosphere in the house is not a conducive for the occasion it's all don't clap yeah don't clap we're gonna, we gonna get there we're gonna be all right we're gonna be all right we just need to remember uh, this day is not about you it's about what he did for you Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and I asked them on Friday night, who else do you know would have done this for you? And so we're getting ready to go into the word of God, but before we do, uh, it's another uh, uh, Resurrection Sunday that God has kept and uh, helped, healed, and made whole. Uh, our angel, our apostle, I'll see your pastor. Let's thank God for him. Let's thank God. Come on. And uh, looking like she's on a, a runway. Let's celebrate our, our awesome first lady. <laughs> pastor Kim and the elders, you may be seated, but we're going to uh, shift gears quickly. Um, let's go to the Word of God on this Resurrection Sunday, Resurrection Celebration Sunday. Uh, we go to the Word of God in 1 Corinthians. Pastor Kim didn't know I, we did not talk this morning, and she did not know I was going there, but we're going to 1 Corinthians 15th chapter. The Lord, is, the Lord is leaving his word in here this morning. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 8, verses 1 through 8. And then when you get home, read 1 Peter one through three. First Corinthians, you pray for me, I'm struggling with sinus and bronchitis, but um, this is Resurrection Sunday. First Corinthians 15, one through eight says, now brothers and sisters, I'm reading from the Amplified version this morning. Now brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved. If you hold firmly to the word, I preach to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For what I have received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins, According, somebody say, according to the scriptures. To the scriptures. That he was buried and he was raised on the third day. How? According to, according to the scriptures. 
and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the 12. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, watch this, last of all, he appeared to me too, as to one born out of due time. Just for cross-reference, read First Peter when you get home. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Paul says, and last of all, he appeared to me too, as one who was born out of due time. I want to say to Paul, and I want those of you in the house who will join with me, we say to Paul in retrospect, and we met him too. And we met him too. Tell your neighbor, I met him too. Born out of the right time. But still, we met him too. And that's what we need to remember this morning, that um, this is not just a celebration or reenactment of something that happened earlier. Uh, the reality of it is real to us even on today. Those of you who have been saved by the power of the Holy Ghost, uh, come on, lift your hands and just say, shout hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. It has been tested and proven that we are able uh, to live 40 days without food, that we can live three days without water, and we can live eight minutes without air. And I want to add to that, but we can't live a minute without Jesus Christ. <laughs> Yet we live in a world where the majority of the population believes and lives as though they can. Just consider all the people that you know that you are uh, influencers to and those who you are in relationship to. Uh, they may not say to you they don't believe in God, but they live lifestyles that let you know that they don't. Amen. Today's lifestyle, today lifestyles are defined uh, by A1 and social status, by personal aspirations, materialism, and competition. People want to want, they want what they want. Watch this. People want they, what they want, and they want it before you get it. Right. We allow a godless society to define the meaning of success and fulfillment in our lives. As a result, we have been lost in a paradox of contradictions, of an era and an atmosphere of confusion. We want bigger houses, but don't want to stay home. We are busier than we've ever been, but we accomplish less. We have more information, education, and knowledge but less common sense. We have more inventions and more problems, but more problems. We can send a ship up to the moon, but can't get one under a bridge. We strive for quantity and are impatient with quality. Life has become lost in that which does not save or sanctify. But it seems to me that before the foundation of the world, the omniscient God of all creation knew that every generation, we, because of sin, would be conflicted, confused, and challenged in knowing the true meaning and purpose of life. So in his infinite wisdom, he sends Jesus to be the way, the truth, and the life. In a day where you can wake up to a new lifestyle, born out of evil, corrupt, perverted flesh mentality, how could you not rejoice today that Jesus is our resurrection and he is our life? We, with deliberate intention now, I move, 
I move expeditiously so we can take our communion, which was established a couple of days ago. With deliberate intention, the Apostle Paul uses four words to describe the journey, the full journey of Jesus Christ can be summed up in four words which Paul uses. The four words validate and confirm the whole life milestones and behavior and actions of Jesus. The four words which he uses were the source and the resource upon which Jesus depended on throughout his earthly life. The words are found in the beginning of the chapter, and it's in verse 3. We read it and we said it, according to the scriptures. Uh -huh. That's important because it was not of that day. The major schools of thought are Greek and Jewish philosophy. It was not the teachings of the Sadducees or the Pharisees. No, that's not, it wasn't astrology. Jesus lived his life completely according to the scriptures. He surrendered himself to the word. There were no moments, hear me, there were no moments in his life that he lived outside of the book. After the ancient text did prophesy, it prophesied all about the coming and the life of Jesus. Jesus told the disciples many times that the scriptures were being fulfilled by what he was doing. That's why even in his hours of agony, when he was about to die, that's why his last utterances, his final utterances were also according to the scripture. For this cause, he never attempted to reinterpret, to misinterpret, to embellish or revisit or, re or revise the word of God. Jesus lived by the scriptures, through the scriptures, he fulfilled the scriptures, and he became the scriptures. Paul, who was born out of due time, was not one of the original 12 disciples. He did not follow Jesus' early ministry, but Paul was passionately, during the time of Jesus, he was passionately per persecuting Christians. Paul was, his encounter with Jesus, his encounter with Jesus was years after the crucifixion. Amen. But his counter encounter with Jesus was, watch this, his encounter with Jesus, and you gotta get this, because we said we met Jesus too. His encounter with Jesus years later was as impactful to him as the disciples who lived with Jesus. Amen. I'm gonna say that again, y'all. Yeah. Let, let me say it this way. Paul, who did not live in the midst of Jesus. Paul, who was the least of the apostles, is the same Paul that wrote half of the New Testament. You're, you're missing the point. Paul wrote all of this from what he received through a revelation. Paul could do all this and teach and preach so profoundly about a time he was not in because of his relationship with the source of his revelations. I need to hear from somebody who you too have been born out of time, but the revelation of who Jesus is is what keeps your faith intact, which keeps you believing, which keeps you serving, which keeps you growing, which keeps you becoming transformed. Born out of time but still can get a prayer through. Born out of time, but we still can receive the plan of salvation. Born out of time, but still qualify for a miracle. Paul, Paul could have interrogated the 500 who were still living. Paul could have interrogated 
those that have been with Christ. But Paul's greatest evidence, though he was not there, Paul's greatest evidence was his personal testimony. I, I, no, no, no. I need to hear a praise from everybody in the house that you have a personal. I lift, I lift Paul's experience because uh, we cannot preach, we cannot sit in here, we cannot act like we're just serving a historical Jesus. At some point, he has to get up off these pages. must become your living savior uh, because I declare there are some people in this room that can tell you they met Jesus too uh, uh, no, no, stop that soft clap and that's not this time uh, 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 that's how you clap because you like something else but when it comes when it comes to Jesus the hands you the hands you clapping he gave you Some of us met Jesus. Some of us was driving down the street when we met Jesus. Some of us was sitting in the bar when we meet Jesus. Some of us was in prison when we met Jesus. Some was in our house sitting in the bed when we met Jesus. All we know was when we met him, our life has never been the same. Give somebody a holy high five. And tell him I met Jesus too. You was minding your business and he grabbed you. You was minding your business and he got a hold of you. You were minding your business and he pulled you out of your mess. And you sit here like you saved yourself. Before you sit down, tell somebody the only way he could have got me was to snatch me. Because I was having fun doing, I was having fun in sin. I was enjoying sin. I'm, I'm talking to the real saints now. I was enjoying the pleasure of sin for a season. Wasn't thinking about church, God, or oh being saved but yet but yet tell somebody he saved me in spite of myself the resurrection of Christ was the chief thing of all that Paul preached Paul was the resurrection theologian because he was the one in his writings he was charged with opposing the false teachers of the day. The people, the people in the Corinthian church they believed that nobody could be raised from the dead. And you could even be killed persecuted, crucified for believing that. Verses 20, 28. But not only did Jesus rise, watch this, but he was the first fruit Amen. of them that slept. Which means when Jesus rose, he shifted the reality for the purpose of bringing in a whole new breed of population that would rise from the dead. That's what I mean by him being the first fruit. He was the seed, the first fruit of a harvest of souls 
that would live uh -huh, to be risen. But, but, but here's what the thing you have to understand now. Uh, Paul has used chapter 15, read it when you get home. This is the chapter that teaches the doctrine of the resurrection of the dead. Paul, who had not been with Jesus, is the one that uncovers the deep mysteries and explains the deep mysteries of the resurrection. The disciples had to study Paul. Paul knew that the gospel, watch this now. Paul knew, Paul knew that the gospel could not end with a death. If the gospel had ended with a death, you wouldn't have no reason to have faith in God. If the gospel had risen with a death, you wouldn't be in this church this morning because there would be no need to have a church. If the gospel had ended up in a death, then all of those who died would stay Watch this now. In the midst of Paul's preaching and teaching, I love this. In the middle of Paul's preaching and teaching, he shifts his theology, he shifts his message, he shifts what he's proclaiming from a cross where people are sitting around, standing around, uh, 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 looking, crying, hurt, wounded, at Christ on the cross, the sky dark, everybody hurt, and this blood, they wonder about the, the, the nails in his hands. And, and, and when my professor's father, Raymond Brown, he says, you don't worry about the nails in his hands. He can handle that. He was a carpenter's son. He could take it. For you. Paul shifts from the cross and his message becomes because he could not have you <coughs> standing at the cross hurt because Jesus died. He shifts his message and his message becomes, verse 15, now is Christ risen from the dead. Okay, I got to say, say that again, Pastor Kim. Because y'all still looking at the cross. He shifted the preachers. He shifted the missionaries. He shifted generations to come to don't get stuck at the cross. But three days later, you have to shift from a dying Christ to a resurrected Christ. I, I gotta, I gotta stay there a minute because some of y'all still looking like this Good Friday. <laughs> Listen, if you don't realize he got up, then you ain't gonna get up. Paul says, now is Christ risen from the dead. When, when Paul used the word, somebody holler now. Uh, that was good. Just do a little bit better. Somebody holler now. That's good. When he said the word now, the world shifted from Friday to Sunday. When Paul said now, he moved us from the place of gloom to the place of power in a dimension beyond death and the grave. When he used the word now, he silenced all the unbelievers because when he said now, the evidence was undeniable. Christ was real. Christianity was right, and the king had risen. Uh -huh. And the doctrine could never be buried again 
because it has statistical evidence and it became a living Bible truth that proclaimed, watch this y'all, this gonna, this gonna, that's gonna, that, that proclaimed, guess what? He got up. I need some of y'all just looking at me. Let the devil hear you declare. There's some demons in your life, some, some contrary spirits, some opposition, some enemies in your life. They need to hear you declare, he got up. Now, coming to the close. However, oh, the Williams, there's a major problem that we have created in the New Testament church. And everything we shouting about, everything we claim we believe, what we are rejoicing about, Pastor Kim, the very tenets of our faith have also become a stumbling block. It's a stumbling block to God's intent that we live in the power of the resurrection. And it becomes evidence when, you, when we have to fight with the attitude, the atmosphere of the house. You do not believe and understand the reality of the power of the resurrection. Let me help you now, let me help you. The problem is, uh, here is the nature of the resurrection. Problem is, you can't have a resurrection without having a death. The stumbling block is that we have exalted death to a place and a position beyond the scope of the word of God. And we, we act and react to death as though death were the last final stage and the last stage of life. Come on now. We, we, live, we, we live in here, we, we sitting in here, living, preparing to die. When Christ died so we could live some more. Yes. I'm gonna say that again. We sitting in here counting years when when, when he rose from the grave, your life is no longer counted by years. Let me stay there for a minute. We, 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 we live looking to die. Then we sneak resurrection in here as if resurrection is a miracle. Resurrection was not a miracle, uh-huh. If you claim that it's a miracle, then that's contrary to the scripture. Because in Acts 2.24, it's written, God, I heard somebody say Jesus raised himself. No, no, no. God raised up Jesus. Yes. Having loosened the, the, the pains of death. Because, watch this, it was impossible for death to hold him down. <laughs> Acts 13.37. Because, but the whom but the one whom Christ raised from the dead did not see corruption. It would have been a violation of the will of God to allow his son to be given over to corruption. It was not a miracle. It was always the divine plan of God. To give us eternal life through Jesus Christ. It was always his plan. Pastor Kim read it. That this corruptible shall put on incorruptible. And this mortal, come on, y'all know it. This mortal shall put on immortality. So when the, incorrupt, the corruptible shall put on incorruption and the mortality shall put on immortality, then shall it be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Death, where is your sin? Grave, where? It was the plan of God. He didn't need a miracle. Let me keep talking to y'all just looking at me. I got you. 
The resurrection of Jesus, watch this. The resurrection of Jesus was not God's solution to death. It was God's solution to sin. He just used death. Remember what he said, except the seed fall into the ground and die. That's him using death to his purposes. Since sin came by Adam, and Adam is a reason that we all die in Adam, but in Jesus Christ, but in Jesus Christ, we all live. Yeah, let me, let me, let me, on, on this Sunday now, you see death happens, death happens when a living person or a thing is absent now of the life-giving processes, vitals, and biological functions. But watch this, that's for physical death. Jesus did not say, I come that you might die. He said, I come that you might have life and have that what? And the original text says, to the full and the overflow. The whole purpose and plan of God, the whole purpose and plan of God is based upon his desire to give life. To give life. Uh huh. That's why he put the reproductive seed in everything inside of it so that it can continue to live. Uh -huh. His ultimate plan has always been given life. Uh, death is both death now, and we're not going to stay there because some of y'all spirit. Uh, 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 and I'm going to tell you why that is too in a minute. But death is both an exit and an entrance. Death is both a way out and a way in. After death, after death comes the resurrection. Now, do you believe that? Do you believe that after death comes the resurrection? Amen. Then because the resurrection now gives uh, more, not more death, the resurrection gives more life. <clears throat> death leads to more life, not life that is waiting to die. Amen. It cannot say. Now, we, we're going someplace with this. Walk with me now. We're not living to die. We're living to live some more. Okay, stay with me now. Stay with me now. We have a problem because we're tight in here this morning, Lady God. See, we're tight because we believe in the doctrine of resurrection, but we don't believe in the reality of the power of resurrection. I'm going to say it again. All you smart little preachers and teachers and people, we believe in the doctrine of resurrection, but we don't believe in the power of resurrection. I'm going to say it one more time until I make you mad. We believe in the doctrine of resurrection, but we don't believe in the power of resurrection. See, what we forget is that the principle of the doctrine, you wouldn't have the doctrine of resurrection if it wasn't for, for the person who was behind the doctrine. Uh-huh. You can't have, here's the problem. You could believe in the doctrine and not believe in the person. The Jews did it. They believe in the doctrine of resurrection, but they don't believe in Jesus. Uh huh. Uh huh. And that's the problem here this morning. We are doctrinal correct, but we don't believe in the power of resurrection. That's why Jesus. That's why Jesus had to say to Martha when Martha was accusing him of not coming on time when Lazarus died. Jesus had to say to her, "What you looking for?" Uh huh. Uh huh. What you reading about? I am. I am the resurrection and I am the life. Notice that it's two different things. I got up and then I brought you a new kind of life. I didn't just get up and you go back to how you was living before I got you up. I got you up because there's a whole new kind of life on the side of the river. Jesus, Jesus had to, Pastor Kim, Jesus had to get Martha straight because Martha quoted to him the doctrine. 
I know he going to get up in the last resurrection. That's why Jesus said, I'm not talking about the last resurrection where everybody going to get up. I said I am right now in this crazy moment that you're going through. I am right now the resurrection and the life. You don't need the life later. You need the life. Now. Now. And Jesus is saying, I'm trying to give y'all a new reality. And you holding on. You holding on to the old. I'm trying to. You believe, listen, you believe in it. I need you to believe in me. Joseph said, he said, there is coming a general resurrection and the dead in Christ shall rise first. He said, that is futuristic, eschatological. We believe that. He said, but in the meantime, I need somebody to holler in the meantime. In the meantime, I was cruci- you was crucified with Christ. In the meantime, you were buried with Christ. In the meantime, you got up with Christ. And now you're supposed to be walking in the newness. I need somebody to say newness of life. Uh, and I'm, I'm finishing. Right now, he says, here's the close in Revelation. We're going into communion. And I travel this tenderly because I'm aware of human grief and loss, but this will help you because this is what made me run around the library the other day. Since you say you believe in the doctrine of resurrection, and since you say you believe in God raised Jesus, since you believe that we are raised with Jesus, and since you believe that the resurrected life How many of you believe in eternal life? I'm going to say that again. Because do you know some saints was looking at me? How many in this place believe in eternal life? Paul says in the text, he says, if you have been risen with Christ, then he says, I need to tell you something. If you have been risen with Christ, then I need you to seek those things which are above. In other words, when I am on the resurrected side, there must be a transformation of my thinking, my mind, my thoughts, and my perspective. I cannot have the same perspective on the other side that I'm supposed to have on this side of the living resurrection. In other words, he's saying you must become heavenly minded because we're too earthy. The the reason why we don't have the atmosphere of celebration in the house is because you're too earthy. We live by the trends, the standard, the dictates, the the definitions of the world, which means that we practice uh, earthly lifestyles, which is a contradiction to the resurrected living. We don't seek to know how heaven operates. We don't know how heaven operates so we can reproduce it. So watch this. what they're doing in heaven can come on earth. We don't seek that. We get involved in our earthly stuff and totally ignore uh, what's going on in heaven. Let let me help you now. Um, um, How can you, if we seek together in Christ, in heavenly places, and our our perspective is heavenly, we're, we're doing stuff like heaven is supposed to do it, then why is it when we come in here, we have to work you up into a praise? Uh, when, when according to scripture, we enter the gates. Watch this, here we go. Y'all, y'all sit, sit, sit. For, for the believer, watch this. For the believer, Eternity and eternal life started in you when you said, yes, Lord. When you got the Holy Ghost. uh -uh. Oh, y'all making me feel like I'm preaching to another kind of group. 
When you got the Holy Ghost, he puts eternity down in your soul. Right where you sit, you got eternal life. <laughs> right where you sit, you got eternal life. I need somebody, give somebody a holy fire, high five, and tell them, I got eternal life going on right now. Tell them, I got eternal life going on right now. Tell them, I got eternal life going on in me. Here then is the point, and I'm done. And I'm done. If I got eternal life, going on in me right now and I'm in the presence of God right now somebody say right now watch this now if my departed loved ones to be absent is to be present and they too pass through death and have eternal life now here's my question I know the separation is difficult because of humanness. I know it. But then again, in God, according to heavenly things, there is no separation. Because in God, in eternity, there is no time. So right now, they're rejoicing in the presence of God. They're happy in the presence of God. They're shouting in the presence of God. Here's my problem. But we who remain are still on earth and we got to bag you in the presence of God to praise God to worship God to honor God to exalt God who got the problem us or them he said we are Romans 6 and 8 says, we are united through resurrection. I'm going to say this, and my family can get me later. Thank you, Bishop. I got permission. When I'm depressed and I'm sad over the fact that Dee Dee gone, I put on some shouting music. I go in her bedroom and say, come on, Dee Dee, let's dance together. And it ain't her that got to start dancing. It's me that has to start dancing. Let thy kingdom come on earth. You start dancing with somebody that you know that's gone on to be with the Lord. They're not dead. They're not in a cemetery. They're in the presence of the Lord. Right along with us. I'm done. Go ahead, don't stop. You don't need no music to do that. You go ahead and dance. Y'all be seated. We shall be. Uh, we are re resurrected. United in Christ together. Uh, did push out. They dancing. What's your problem? We who, we who are alive and remain. We got issues. We who are alive and remain. You got issues. Hallelujah. Let's go. 
We get ready to go into communion. We don't die. We don't live to die. We live to live some more. Ain't nobody dead in, ain't nobody dead in here. Living or dead, ain't nobody dead. We have eternal, either you believe it or you don't. And once you get off of the pain of their absence, you're but look what you recognize, they're better off than we are. The problem, the problem, Elder Cornell, is we believe in the doctrine, but we don't believe in the reality of the power. So sit down, y'all sit on down while y'all sit there looking at me. Sit on down. If you praise him, you'll feel better. If you're here on this Resurrection Sunday, somebody say, I heard something say, Carolyn, could it be that some of them, they can't dance with their loved ones because they don't know where their loved ones went? And I heard the Lord told me, tell them, mind your business. That ain't your business. All I want, I want unity on earth as it is. And they not sitting up looking in heaven. They're not sitting in heaven look, watching a performance. They're worshiping, rejoicing, and praising God. The elders are coming. See, see how, see how y'all moving? How y'all moving? I need some, I need about 50 folk in here, just 50. Just throw your head back and shout hallelujah. If you're here this morning, I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is risen. Whatever men may say, if you're here this morning, you can slow that up. If you're here this morning and you don't have eternal life because you have not been risen with Christ, because we're not promised next Sunday, I need you to get up and come now. I need some elders walking the aisles asking them to come, bringing them down here. Don't let them walk by themselves. 
you get up, an elder will come and walk with you. You get up, and one of the elders will come get you. This is Salvation Sunday morning. This is Power Sunday morning. Come on, young people. Come boldly. Don't be ashamed or embarrassed. Come and get eternal life. Come and let us pray with you. That's right. We invite you to come. This is Resurrection Sunday. And it's not about clothes. It's not about... This is not Easter for us. This is your getting up Sunday morning. Get up out of your seat like he got up. And you come freely and boldly to the throne. That's right, you can clap for those who are coming. Go get somebody else now. Anybody else need prayer? So we can touch a degree. I want to see some families come to the altar. Some families need to come to the altar. Some families need to come to the altar. We need some more workers. Come on. This is Resurrection Sunday. Get up. Get up. Get up. We have a pastor who will care for your soul. Get up. You don't have to go through life by yourself. You don't have to go through life by yourself. Some saints you need to touch and agree about something. This is Resurrection Sunday for the saints too. Come and get that matter handled this morning. Come and get it eradicated. Come and get it dealt with once and for all. And let the power of God, the blessings of God, the strength of God arise in your life. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. He is the bread of life. He is the light of the world. Everything you need is in Jesus. Come on, come on, come on. We want some more, some more come, some more families. I want some more families to come and get prayer this morning. It's Resurrection Sunday. It's Resurrection Sunday. It's Resurrection Sunday. Get up, get up. Are still being prayed for everybody open your voice and sing along with the choir everybody this is our anthem this morning God bless you, sis. 
God bless you, God bless you. Anybody else? This is your getting up Sunday. This is your getting up Sunday morning. God bless you, elders. God bless you, elders. Anybody else need prayer? Everybody, for the last time, lift your voice and sing. Tell somebody, tell somebody. You ask me how I know he lives. Everybody throw your hands up in the air and begin to bless a, a risen Savior. Open your mouth and bless a risen Savior. Let your neighbor hear how you feel about a risen Savior. Atmosphere. Play it, Minister Buddy. While we worship a minute. Come on, church. Everybody should be worshiping a rigid savior. But I know I want every believer in this house to put a Lord I thank you on your lips and let it come out your heart. Open out your mouth. Everybody that open your mouth and say, Lord, I thank you. Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. You may be seated.
it moving on. That's what this Sunday is about. We serve as you take your seat. As you take your seat, tell your neighbor, I serve a risen Savior. No, no, no. I didn't say to say it, just say it like you got some anointing behind you. Say, I serve a risen Savior. We're moving on now. Let's do this quick. Let's do this quickly. Because we're going to praise God in communion. Because this is the first time that communion was celebrated this week. And even in your praise, he said, as often as you do it. in remembrance of somebody in remembrance somebody in the remembrance of Jesus shout hallelujah very quickly on this Easter Sunday you can stay right there but brother buddy just bring it down because we go we go into communion but I need I need everybody in the house this morning to go with me on this resurrection Sunday I'm going to give my hundred. I need you to give yours. But we have to move quickly this morning because we have to go into communion, get in the arm. Get in the arm with me quickly. Get in the arm with me quickly. I love the way you're coming. I can't beg you this morning because it's Easter. It's Resurrection Sunday. We doing this in honor of Jesus Christ this morning. Don't stop praising God, just bring it on down here. Come on y'all, let's come quick. Let's come quickly this morning. Let's come. Bishop and Lady Gussie giving their resurrection seeds. Come on, come on. I need to see some choir members down here this Sunday. This is Resurrection Sunday. I give our line. Come on, stand with your devices. If you don't have it, don't look away. Need about five more people. Thank you, Brother Marcus. Need about, need some more choir members. Need some deacons, some ushers. We all in this together on Resurrection Sunday. Everybody was raised with Christ. We say about your titles this morning. Thank you, missionaries. Need some more, need some more. Need some more. Resurrection Sunday, we should be back to the door. We should be back to the door. This is Resurrection Sunday. He got up with all power. That means power over your finances.
and they're still coming. They're still coming. This is our resurrection. This is our resurrection offering. Keep looking at me, don't look down. Keep looking at me, you all right. Put it in your right hand, those of you who are standing, everybody else. Everybody else, stand with your resurrection offering. And that should be, get the children something this morning. Give the children an offering this morning. I need us. I want to give one for Mother Leaf this morning. I want to give a resurrection offering for Mother Leaf this morning. Give, give, give an offer for somebody you know couldn't be here this morning. Find somebody. Everybody should be standing now. And your offering is better than your sacrifice. Is the mic on? Get up. This is Resurrection Sunday. Everybody stand there. I'm a, especially if you don't have no money, I want to pray you get some funds. You need funds. That's right, waiting for a few more in the back. Come on, young people, stand up. There you go, there you go. Lift it in your right hand. This offering is special on today because it's Resurrection Sunday. And everybody knows on Resurrection Sunday, it's a, a, a special string to give because the mentality of the world says, we're going to use this to buy an outfit, or we're going to use this for our Easter dinner. But we plant seeds. We plant seeds in the work of God, in ministry, because that's where we get the greatest harvest. Father, in the name of Jesus, this is our Thanksgiving offering. We're thanking you for sending Jesus. We're thanking you that Jesus endured the cross. We thank you that on the third day, he got up. And we thank you between Friday and Sunday, he went through hell and got up with all power. Now, God, we got up with him. And we stand on the side of the newness of life. God put newness in everything. Newness in relationships, newness in families, newness in my house, newness in my business, newness in my mind, newness in my body. Everything that should hinder our lives was nailed to the cross and got up in a newness of operations and functions and being. This we give you this Sunday morning with a new attitude. Because you told us if we were risen, then think, seek heavenly mindedness. This we do in the name of Jesus and all the believers. Come forth. Let the sinner all move first. Come, come, come. Come saying, Lord, I thank you. Come saying, Lord, I thank you. Come on down the aisles. Come on down. Take, just get in the aisles. Someone should be waiting for you. That's right. Just bring your offering on down one of the aisles. somebody while you passing them. Give somebody a hug or a high five or good to see you.
God for the word of God. And just to believe you could go back and when you get a chance and start reading with uh, chapter 23 in which it makes it clear that it was at that time when Jesus as he begins to begin the work of the ministry of God and the thing, the thing is look at this the second chapter I mean the new chapter it starts with Saint, Saint uh, uh, Matthews and also you make it clear about the, what we're going to do today the book uh, chapter 23 now, I don't know, did y'all give away all your, everybody should walk out with one of these, huh? They don't need to be in the book, they need to be in here, so they can have it, we have service in here. Tell them, bring them here and give them away. That's, that's, why, that's why we're here. So you don't have to give it to you when you go out at the door. Tell them, bring them in here. Tell, tell them to bring the, bring the, information in here the ushers will start giving them away so you don't have to wait till you go out the door okay okay it, 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 does it, it all of you some of you who already have yours raise them up let me see them See, all of you should have this. I, I said this two, two days ago to make sure that, uh, they're giving it through now. Okay. The, the usher's going to make sure if you don't have one, you, they're going to give the one. This is not to give someone when you go out the door. This We have service down here. Bring here and give, give them away. A church with, uh, with right now you got over a thousand people in there now. I just come here with a couple, couple copies, you know. So, mm. okay, how, how many of you have your Bible with you? We have. Move over to chapter uh, twenty-three. Twenty-three. And you can, you can read that when you get home, but uh, we need to talk about chapter 27. It's very important for you to have this. You don't have a chapter, have, get one. When you come in this church again, ask for one, okay? Should, you should have one, okay? Which verse is Chapter 26, 17. Chapter 17, you have it? Now, the first day, yeah, chapter 17. Okay, okay somebody come up here and read this for me. You start for 17. Matthew chapter 26. Verse 17, now the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? And he said, Go into the city to such a man, and say unto him, The master saith, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. Now when the even was come, he sat down with the twelve. Verse 21, and as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. And they were exceeding sorrowful, and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? And he answered and said, 
He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man goeth as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? He said unto him, Thou hast said. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and brake it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. Amen. Take it and drink it. It's very important. The deacons are ready to put it in place. But I want to say to all of you, I was the, the, the message this morning just made me feel good because I remember we, we've been a, uh, overseas and then came came here uh, in Baltimore, and uh, it seemed like seemed like a whole group of doctors got together and other people to assess them when, when they were sick. They went in to deal with my 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 heart. And uh, through the blessings of God, uh, God has a way. That, 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 that there's, there's no situation that God, can, God, he has the power to take care of anything. This is about over 10 of them got together and deal with my heart. Came out in the blessings of God. And so God is available. I mean, the power of God. And so well, even today, what we do is so much important. And we come to take, uh, as we take uh, bread today, and take the, the, this is very important to us, according to him, because him uh, uh, being the person that bring uh, salvation to everybody, and he brought it through. And even, even after they had done this, uh, later they came against him. And th three days he was in. He was in the. He was in the. In the. In the. In the valley. I mean, sick. Sick, in there. But, but the, the power of God is able to uh, even put us back to where, where we need to be. And he rose up out of that and came up to show show the world everywhere that God God has the power to do anything. Amen. And, and so don't worry about you. Uh, you, you. You may be in the grave; it doesn't matter. But God has the power to bring you out by the power of the Holy Ghost. And then all of us, those of you who are not here, who have not received. I asked the, uh, the uh, elders to come through, get in place, ask the deacons and all, and elders and ministers, will you all get in place at this time? As we're going to take communion at this time, the blessing of God. Of all that God has done, uh, somebody came to me today, uh, they were get, get ready to have a hospital uh, next week. And as I prayed for her, it doesn't matter what condition it is, God is able to bring us through, give us power and deliverance. And we're, we're glad for that. It's good to know Jesus and get ready to know his power in us in the name of Jesus. So I ask everybody in this church, be ready. Deacons will bring it to you. Deacons in there, even there, we have women in, in a, among the diocese and I mean, of the, they are all going to come together and be a blessing to you when you leave this day. So that's why today is a day of celebration, a 
a celebration of what Christ did when he was still alive. The salvation of Christ, what he brought for us. Understand, that's one of the importance of being baptized and being filled with the Holy Ghost. It doesn't matter how long you may be away, but God's able. Whenever he comes, he'll come with the power of the victory in Jesus' name. He can bless the offering now. Yes. No, yo. You don't have to wait. To, women don't have to wait till at the end to come up here to receive this, okay? The women, you all come down here. Don't worry. First of all, you'll get with your own husband, so you go out with him. Come on.
Everybody stand. 